Hello and welcome to our carol service. This year has been one full of confusion, uncertainty and heartbreak. Nothing has turned out how we thought it would and restrictions, press conferences and masks now just seem part of the new normal that none of us imagined. But despite the difficulties, COVID can't stop Christmas. And even though we can't meet together like we usually would, we still wanted to give you a reason to celebrate and therefore have got a little bit creative. Tonight, we've got the band singing some classic carols. We've got the leaders of rock talking about the incredible community response here in Weston. One of the doctors heading up the vaccine rollout locally and an incredible spoken word performance, plus some stunning shots showcasing our town. We know it's not what we would have necessarily chosen, but it's the best we've got right now. So we hope it brings you some joy as we learn about how amazing our little community here have been during these most testing times. Here's to a happier and healthier 2021 when we can be celebrating all together once again. Enjoy the show and Merry Christmas. My name is Michelle Michael. I'm one of the directors at the Grand Pier in Western Supermare. It's wonderful to be part of this carol service and I'd like to welcome you to the Grand Pier. Thank you for your support this year and we look forward to welcoming you back in 2021. Merry Christmas.
chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The birth of Jesus took place like this. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they came to the marriage bed, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, sure grand but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angel spoke in the dream, Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth. And when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves because he will save his people from their sins. This would bring the prophet's embryonic sermon to full term. Watch for this. A virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew, for God is with us. Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary. But he did not consummate the marriage until she had the baby. He named the baby Jesus. Hi everybody in Western Supermare. Um, I'm Deborah Green. I'm the founding director of the charity Redeeming Our Communities, ROC. And I just want to bring you greetings today at your carol service. We were formed in 2004, so we're 16 years old this year. And we are people of goodwill working together towards safer, kinder communities. The key benefit of ROC is that you ask the statutory body, the police, education, health, you ask them what is it that they need our community to do to help. And then we can galvanise and marshal all that goodwill in the community to work in collaboration with them and towards their aims and objectives. We started in uh, February with a conversation which was really a gathering of interested like-minded people who uh, gathered together to hear from Deborah Green. It was so fantastic to be with you in February for the Rock Conversation and I know Penny and Dave, the action group leaders, will be updating you about what's been happening locally since that conversation. We had around 180 people participate which is incredible. And uh, through that, we came up with a number of ideas. But <laughs> what happened next was, uh, as we all know, was COVID-19. And so literally weeks after, we knew we were going into lockdown and it was this unprecedented time. So we worked with the council, with the town council, with helping people, with the For All Healthy Living Centre and five church hubs and we basically together worked on a response to requests for help. We had about 120 volunteers across the five church hubs. We undertook, I would have said, about 3,000 acts of kindness over the eight, nine weeks of um, lockdown. Our network helps people have conversations about what they're doing and you learn and you can then contribute. One thing we did really here were the volunteers, people during lockdown, um, people on furlough had the opportunity to volunteer who'd never volunteered before. So that's that's really one of the, the key things I think we want to try to build is, is kinder, safer and kinder communities in Western and world. We want to encourage people to look out towards their neighbour and to you know do that in their own neighbourhoods and um, with their own neighbours. It's all about changing our society for the better and I'm so delighted to be at the carol service. I wish I could be there in person by the sea, but I'm up here in Manchester where we get a lot of rain. But God bless you, have a wonderful time, and thank you for being part of Rock. If you want to get involved, we're always looking for more volunteers. Um, the best thing is to make contact with us. Um, we'll put up our email and our Facebook page for people to make contact with and have a conversation with us. We're happy to talk to anybody. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth 
to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren, and here she is six months pregnant. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. Then the angel left her.
let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56, Mary's song. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zachariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leapt. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly, You're so blessed among women, and the baby in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed? that the mother of my Lord visits me. The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. And Mary said, I am bursting with God news. I'm dancing the song of my Saviour God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy, set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arm and showed his strength, scattered the bluffing braggarts. He knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child, Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies piled them high. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and then went back to her own home. Mary's Song, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watch over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them and the God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A saviour has just been born in David's town, a messiah, a saviour who is messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. I think it represents a, a turning point I think it's a, a sign of hope. Um, I mean, Christmas is all about hope, isn't it? It's about the hope of the world coming into the world. Um, and now we've got a situation where, you know, the vaccine is going to give us hope for getting back to normal, which is what we all want. So I'm Dr. John Heather. I'm a GP at 168 Medical Group, but I'm also the chair of Clear Health Group, which is the um, organization that encompasses all of the GP practices in the area. 
make sure that services run really well and deliver the best possible services for our patients. It's been a really hard, tough nine months, hasn't it? I think at the beginning, we didn't know what we were facing. In the hospital, they were the real heroes, to be honest, because they were facing tremendous um, pressures of numbers and a challenge of a new illness and people desperately ill, ending up in ITU with an illness we didn't really understand and unfortunately lots of people dying. And then we had the summer when things eased up a bit um, and then unfortunately as we've kind of opened up a bit the, um, the virus has come, come back uh, and in a really sort of difficult and aggressive way we've just come out of the second lockdown. The difficulty for us is that this virus means that you have, everything takes longer, you have to have more space and actually we're running with less staff because um, people are maybe getting unwell with the coronavirus or possibly they're having to isolate, um, maybe their children are being sent home from school. You know, I appreciate for people listening to me, um, they want us to be there to deliver services for them and what I would say is we're really trying um, and we want to do our best for you but it is difficult. I think it's interesting, isn't it? You know, as Christians, you know, we're celebrating Christmas and that's the time when the light of the world entered for the first time. And, uh, you know, thank God for Jesus. Now we have uh, talk of a light at the end of the tunnel and that's exactly what this vaccine is. You know, it's our way of actually beginning to fight back against the virus. Coronavirus has been absolutely terrible. Um, but the vaccine is humanity at its best. Um, you know, from the fact that the, the genome, that's the, the, the sort of genetic makeup, the blueprint of the virus was released to the world uh, before the end of January. There's been fantastic collaboration between scientists. The ingenuity of the vaccine is amazing. When I look at the science of it, I go, oh my goodness, that's so wonderful. Um, and the fact that they were able to work so quickly without cutting any corners to get the vaccine approved. We're not there yet but the first vaccines have been given. The vaccine center has been stood up in Western. To do this properly, we're gonna to have to give 150,000 vaccines um, if everybody eligible in Western and world gets it. That's a massive task, but um, we're up to it. We've uh, established a, a local vaccine center, which is at the Riverbank Medical Center, which is just down behind Sainsbury's, for those who don't know it. We're going to be going through the various cohorts, groupings of patients. We start with those that are over 80. The practices will be writing out or phoning those patients and calling them in. As soon as the vaccine arrives, we're going to be standing up lots of staff to vaccinate people, much like a mass flu campaign, but this is going to be a, a marathon, not a sprint, because it's going to take us four to six months to, to actually vaccinate everybody that needs to be vaccinated. I absolutely understand why uh, people might be concerned. So what I would encourage people is, if you get the call, then book your vaccine. It's safe, it's effective, it's a way we can make a difference. This is us at our best. This is massive collaboration. It's, um, you know, people have worked really hard. They haven't cut corners. You know, people talk about the fact that it, it normally takes 10 years, and that's absolutely true. But that's because everything is normally done sequentially, whereas actually they've been able to run things in parallel. And there's been unprecedented cooperation, unprecedented collaboration. I mean, the one that we're using at, at the beginning is 94% effective. And it's particularly effective in older people, which is amazing because that isn't normally what happens. And so the people that are most at risk are the ones that are going to be, you know, really helped by this uh, vaccine. It's been a tough year, but I think I go into 2021 um, with, with a lot more renewed hope and enthusiasm. The stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth Long lay the world in sin and never repining Till He appeared and the soul A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel. 
angels' voices Oh night divine Oh night When Christ was born Once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherders were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The sheep herders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen turned out exactly the way they had been told. Welcome to Christmas in these unprecedented times. I hope this poem finds you well. Well, where to begin with a year that's unlike any other, where we feel other, blinded by the lights and legislation that makes us wonder whether we'll even get to see each other. Reminds me of another year that I hear was unlike any other. You know the story. Mary, Joseph, pregnancy, and a donkey for an Uber. Hope of the world delivered in a world gone mad, where crazed leaders demanded blood from their gold-gilted podiums. All sounds strangely familiar. Christian Christmas painted by numbers, baby born in a manger where no one else was. Wise men following a star, not knowing how far from their comfort zones it would lead. Led towards life by a minuscule light in the night sky, just lost people looking for a single sign of purpose, all sounding strangely familiar. Our Christmas lists are filling up, our bank accounts are rounding down, our hopes and plans for Christmas misplaced and placed into some kind of cosmic lost and found. Thoughts turn from thriving to surviving, get through the year and hope I'm not left wanting. And all of it again sounds strangely familiar. So, What's with God's grand plan? All of creation's might might just be born into human form. Strength contained in weakness and all sounding strangely unfamiliar. God drawing near, not disregarding our fears, but instead showing us that Jesus had no problem coming here. God concocting a rescue to end all rescue plans that should have ended in disaster, but now gives hope to man. Sending the best of him into the worst of us, maintaining that surprising balance between divinity and dust. 
This is more than a metaphor of light banishing darkness. It's a holy intervention. I'd call it divine madness. God chose to be born from a virgin's womb, a reject from an inn that just had no room. God is outcast, yet spends his life showing how to cast nets of hope to people drowning in a sea of uncertainty. I'm certainly not going to stand here and preach a faith of plain sailing. It's hard and it's tough. It can feel like you're failing, but Jesus came to the earth to show us this one thing that love will always triumph over evil. Of God's forgiving grace, there's really no equal. He preaches a faith that's almost heretical in the second chances it comes and gives to all. Jesus instead chose a life in its humblest beginnings that shows me there's hope in the darkest of evenings. And I don't know why Jesus came and gave us his life, but with his life's first deep breath, he forever changed mine. So, this Christmas, I worship him like I've got nothing left to give because I've given up pretending to be perfect and I'll never give in. To an enemy that bleeds fear into our holy water supplies, instead I'll choose to remember a God who chose nobodies to raise up our Christ. It seems like the days are darker now than ever before, but there's need and there's homeless and there's loneliness and poor. The winter winds are howling through the branches of hope, drowning out our prayers as they're caught in our throat. But I won't lose sight of that North Star drawing me towards a light that sometimes seems so far. And yet so far he's never let me down, and I'll be damned if I give up on him now. Holiness stepping down from isolation, digging nails into the dirt and bringing salvation. That's a story that captivates generations, liberates people from selfish creations that demand more of ourselves than God ever asked of us, tormenting ourselves with presents and money and cost. God knows I've gone off wandering, but I'll never be lost. Instead, I'm found by a God who happily counted the cost, who chose to live life that would end on the cross. He changed the world in ways we never saw coming, and it all started here on a Christmas Day morning. Matthew 2, verses 1 to 6. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judea territory, this was during Herod's kingship. A band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on a pilgrimage to worship him. When word of the inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified and not just Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religious scholars in the city together and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judea territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judea's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Luke 2, verses 7 to 12. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, myrrh, in a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they walked out another route, left the territory without being seen and returned to their own country.
Hi everybody and it's good to see you. Um, we're from Locking Castle Church. My name's Tom and this is Mims and we're going to pray now together. So let's pray. As we come to a time of prayer for our town, nation and community, we recall the words of Jesus who said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Heavenly Father, in a year where there's been so much pain, uncertainty and difficulty, we pray for our community, town and nation, that the peace and wonder of Christmas would lighten the darkness and bring joy and hope instead of despair. We thank you for our town of Western Supermare. We thank you for all those neighbours and friends who have pulled together during this pandemic and shown love and kindness to help each other through these difficult days. Thank you for all those who have served us tire tirelessly in our hospitals, surgeries, schools, care homes, churches, organisations and businesses. We pray that this Christmas everyone will have a chance to rest and celebrate the birth of your son safely with friends and family. We pray for all those who are working over the Christmas period, for medical staff, for all those in the uniformed and armed services, that they may know peace, comfort and joy at Christmas. Thank you that just as at the birth of Jesus was first announced to working shepherds, so may all those who are working, may they be blessed with God's grace and favour. Father, we pray for our nation and for all in authority at both a local and national level. We pray for the Queen, her government and all those who are making difficult decisions this winter. Give them wisdom and help them to make good choices that will enable the nation to not only prosper, but flourish physically, mentally and spiritually. May his favour be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you, and within you, He's with you, He's with you, in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, and rejoicing, He's for you, 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 He's for you. He is for you, He is for you, He is for you, He is for you.
we pray for ourselves that over this Christmas you would keep us safe and help us to remember those who need extra care or support at this time. We pray for all those in our community who may be lonely, struggling or isolated and help us think creatively of ways to help them and bless them over this Christmas season. In the evening, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you. Thank you, Lord, for the work of Rock and all the churches working together in our community. We pray that the wonderful gift of a relationship with Jesus may be clearly presented and offered to the whole town this Christmas. Lord, help us respond to your grace and cast our cares onto you as we humbly pray. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. No. Mm -hmm.